One time not all that long ago, in a galaxy not all that far away, there came two mighty chosen ones, and we were here to say... Thank you for tuning in to entertain the No! Geeky. No! No? Whether you're a guy in a cave... Oh my god, it's our song! Yes. You're supposed to continue. Or a rogue who's sneaky... I love this jingle! Join Chris and Roger as we... Entertain the geeky? Guys, what's going on? Hey, not much. What's up, Chris? Roger, how are you? Man, it's Sunday. It's Sunday. It's a good day. It's a beautiful day. It's nice outside. It is. We've gone through the hell of summer. Yes. And now fall is fastly approaching. It is rapidly approaching. I'm seeing Halloween things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It shouldn't start till September, but that's okay. <laughs> like, I saw Halloween things three weeks ago at Walgreens. I and got know. Mad. It was weird. I was like, what, what is going on? Hey, you know what I just found out? What's that? The original ending for E.T., yeah. Uh, had the kids after everything went down sitting in their sitting in their mom's kitchen playing D and D. Really? Yeah. And they're like, no, nope, that's for devil worship. Well, that well, no, because that's how the movie started. Like the beginning of the movie, they were playing D and D. Yeah. And Elliot was like, I want to play, and they're like, you can't play D and D. You're too dumb. And the ending was Elliot being able to play D and D with his brother and their friends. Huh. I thought that'd have been a nice little ending. That would have been a good ending. I got the Rolling Rock burps going on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, we do need to do something right now, though. Do it. All right. So, guys, I want to tell you about something awesome, something life-changing, something earth-shattering. It is Slugfest Games. These are the folks that brought you Red Dragon in, the battle for Greyport. Fishing for terrorists? And High Noon Saloon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you came looking for a fight, you came to the right place. That's right. Um, awesome games, awesome people. Uh, go ahead to slugfestgames.com slash ETG. Check out what they have to offer. Games, they, games swag. swag, all of it. Yes, again, that's slugfestgames.com slash ETG. So, so I'm still on this ET thing. Yeah. Like, apparently the audition process was the, was the kids playing D&D. That's how they got... <laughs> that's how they got cast to play an ET. They're like, do you actually know how to play this game? Well, do you know how to act? I mean, think about it. Like, that's a... Like, you look working with kids here, and you want to know if they have the acting chops? Because, you know, nowadays we just cast the, cast the cute kids, and if they can't act, we only show their faces. Right? Here, they're, they're playing D&D at Harrison Ford's house. How cool is that? It, oh, it was Harrison Ford's house. Harrison Ford's house. How cool is that? That is actually very cool. Right? I, now I want to know. I want to know. We're at the home of Indiana Jones. I want to know if Indy played D&D. <laughs> like, God, I want to know that now. Harrison Ford did you? Know? Yeah. Probably not. No, he had to have. I doubt it. You know, smoke a little, play a little, have Carrie Fisher over, bang a little, whatever. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, we were talking earlier. No, we weren't. We were. The only time we talk is on the show. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, we were talking about the... Uh, Batman not being part of the DCU? And there's a standalone Joker movie, a Joker origin story. Um, I'm, I'm okay with all of this. It's not got Jared Leto. I... I think it's kind of stupid. I know you do. You don't have a bunch of Joker movies coming out at the same goddamn time. Okay, so you have Batman. You have Suicide Squad 2, which Warner Brothers is now fast-tracking. Well, of course. And you have the Joker origin movie. And they, they don't all have to be part of the same universe. I'm okay with this. I think it would be nice to figure out what the hell happened with the Joker that we have. You will in Suicide Squad 2. No. Yeah, and the origin story is just an origin story. It's and, fine. And it's, it's, it's Joker and Harley Quinn. It's not Suicide Squad 2. Whatever. It was, a, yeah. it was originally going to be yeah. Gotham City Siren. So, Suicide Squad 2. Joker and Harley Quinn. Sorry. Uh. Well, we better get more Joker in this one because we had him an awkward amount in the other one. Yeah, I don't know. But what, what, I, what I wanted to bring up is who the fuck comes up with these ideas? So Warner Brothers sits down and they go, hey, you remember that comic Hush? Let's make that a movie. Wouldn't you love to be in one of their board meetings? And I hear, would. Here just... Because they're... Okay. Look, they have one movie that is actually done well in the box office, and that was Wonder Woman. Yeah. Outside of that, they've got I mean, a bunch of well, shit. Well, no, they've all done okay. They've all they, made money. They, they've made money, but um, there, there's as far been no as reviews, Avenger. girl. Well, yeah, fuck reviews. Okay, have you loved those movies? Uh, I actually did like Superman versus Bat Batman. Batman versus, versus Superman, Superman was so-so. I, it wasn't I enjoyed good. it. I enjoyed it a lot more than the critics hated for it. I haven't seen Suicide Squad yet, so I don't know. I enjoyed Suicide Squad a little bit. Um, um, just Wonder Woman I, was good. Wonder Woman, like I said, they've got one good Man, movie. I even like Man of Steel. I might be the only person on the planet that likes that movie. Yeah, you're entitled to be wrong. No, I'm entitled to tell you um, that you're wrong. So, 
wouldn't, like, you go to this board meeting and they're like, hey, hey, guess what? We are, no, Jared Leto's still the Joker. He's still a Joker. Okay, but check this out. Check this out. We're, We're going to do a Joker origin movie for a different Joker. It's not, okay, so first off, in the comics, there's three different Jokers, so this makes sense. This isn't the fucking comics. If they're trying to be. No, they're not. Second off, it's an origin story, so you can't cast Jared Leto, who's, I'm sorry, old as fuck now. He's 43 and he looks 30. To play a Joker in his teens. Or early 20s. This is the origin story. They also, could. It's fucking makeup. It's makeup and CGI, and then we get that stupid Grand Moff Tarkin looking thing. We don't want that. No, Tony First Stark looked great. Tony, <laughs> that's because Ronnie Robert Downey Jr. is almost immortal. He bathes in virgin blood. Him and John John no, Luke Picard get together. He, he looked so young, and it looked good. Yeah, no, and it was no. because of Warner computer Brothers science. Yeah, no, fuck that. I'm tired of computer science. Yeah, well, hire yeah. a different actor. Martin Scorsese is going to direct it, so you're going to get an awesome movie out of this. Yeah, maybe. It's going to be a good movie. It's going to be a fucking crime drama. That's uh, going to be awesome. I. I want to know how our Joker came to be the one that's that they've already established. And you get that put, you... and put in a movie an awkward amount. Hold on, Joker's been recast how many different times now? It's okay. See, recasting is okay because you've got a different like basically it's like a different cinematic thing going on and in each they, iteration. Well, hold on, but it, 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 you don't have to have the same actor play the same character. Or you don't have when to. When you have another movie coming out at James the same Bond, damn no, time, James Bond did it. It's okay. James it's okay. Bond. You're talking about a movie going for 600 years. Yeah. Like, yeah. When we've the... had Batman movies and TV shows since before James Bond. Yeah. Remember the 1940s serials? Yeah, that's fair. And then Batman and Robin but serials? That's, that's that's not what I'm saying, though. What I'm saying is you have... you've look, Okay, look. This box. This box right here. They can't right see here. your box. I know. But I want you to picture a box. That is a representation of what you currently have. Yeah, and they're thinking outside that box, and I'm okay with this. No, no, no. So you've got this representation of what you have and what you've established. Now, you've not filled in this box. You've put a couple of little things in it. Nobody really has any idea what's going on with your box. Okay. I don't think you know what's going on I with don't... your box. You've got this <laughs> box, and then you're like, hey, what if what if we got other items outside of this box? They didn't really pertain to the box, but we're just going to put them there. It's and, about the same people. And, and that's how we got Rogue One. It's about the same people. Yeah. But, yeah. no, Rogue One was... Fucking, Outside the box. Rogue One was in the box. Rogue One was not in the box. It was fucking before episode four, motherfucker. <laughs> it was not in the box. What kind of denial are you in? It was not in, in the, the box. box. Not in the box. In the box. Only because they forced it in that box. They didn't force it into shit. The movie was about that fucking box. Holy crap. Real quickly. Um, moment of silence. I just found this out. Uh, Texas Chainsaw director Toby Hooper died. All right, enough of that. Look, I'm okay with the Joker movie. Do you know why I'm okay with this Joker origin movie? It, it can be in the box. It can be out of the box. It doesn't matter. It's going to be a good movie. And I have said time and time again, if we quit fucking worrying about building cinematic universes and actually focus on telling goddamn good stories, we'll have better movies. And I'm okay with this. If they're willing to take a risk Warner and tell Brothers a better movie. Warner Brothers doesn't give a shit about telling good stories. You don't know that. Yeah, maybe, I do. Maybe after the maybe after getting beat up so often in the box office and by critics, they're like, you know what? Maybe it's time we actually, I don't know, tell decent fucking Batman stories. You would like to think that, but their fucking Batman movie is in complete disarray. Yeah, because Ben Affleck and directors and no, they're ta like there's talks that Ben Affleck isn't even going to stay Batman. No, he will for this movie at least. Oh, thank God. Whatever. Yeah, because shit happens in movies. Look, look what's happening in Deadpool 2, but we don't talk about how craptastic that's going. What, people are dying? Well, people dying, directors beginning fired slash quitting, casting debacles. Like, Well, I mean, part of that is, okay, with Deadpool 2, you've got somebody like Ryan Reynolds that basically spearheaded the first one. And mm -hmm. then he's like, I don't want to deal with anybody's bullshit. Like, we're going to keep these movies good. Okay, and then you have Ben Affleck. Ben fucking Affleck saying, hey... Who's, di movies. who's directed fucking amazing And movies. he was supposed to direct the Batman. I know, and fucking Warner Brothers wouldn't get off his dick. Because the movie was shitty, apparently. It wasn't shitty. How Warner do Brothers know? doesn't know how to make a good one. How do you know? Because they've got these idiots in this room that are like, hey, what's the dumbest thing we can think of today? Who do they got? Who, who's in charge of the DCU now? It's it's a DC guy. Who's a, who is it? Um, Not Dan Slott, because he's Spider-Man. Um, one of the DC heads up, like like one of the guys that actually forms the comics, is now in charge of fucking the movies. So maybe yeah, Warner Brothers well, is he's listening. Been fucking the movies. Maybe Warner Brothers is listening now. 
trying to make good movies. And I'm okay with the Joker origin story. Because, you know what? It's going to be a good movie. You got a high quality director. High quality actors are going fi- to gonna come on board for this. It's going to be awesome. High quality actors have been on board. Name two. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck doesn't count. Jared because Leto. Jared Leto's not... Jared Leto's, you know, kind of a thing. No, Jared Leto's a high quality actor. And he's pissed off about his role as the Joker and he's throwing a bitch fit about it. No, he's not. He yes, just he said, did. I'm happy to see this character through. I want to return to the DCU. Yeah, whatever. He can get fucked. Yeah. I'm just pissy because you don't like the Joker origin movie. No, I think it's a dumb idea. I think we should wait to see what happens. I and I'm okay a with this. Horrible idea. I think they need to fucking fix their cinematic universe. Mess. Maybe, maybe stop trying to make a cinematic universe. You can make all these movies and not have them be a cinematic universe. You don't have to do what Marvel does. Correct, but they're doing it and they're failing. Well, so I want they're... them to fix it. Why fix it? Just stop. Don't fix what's broken. Just say fuck it. We tried. It didn't work. But they're we not. Can... They're not doing that. They're like we can just We can st- hold on. Aquaman. You can Flash. still make these movies. Maybe they're going to do it the fucking right way, which is, hey, Aquaman's over here doing Aquaman shit. Flash is over here doing Flash shit. Batman's doing Batman shit. Superman's doing Superman shit. Wonder Woman, well, you know, she's doing Wonder Woman shit. And every once in a while, we're going to tell a story where these fuckers get together and blow some shit up. That's the way it should be. Let them work on their own. Come together every once in a while. Do Justice League 2, 3, 4, whatever the fuck you, you want to do. You just described a cinematic universe. No, because you're all like, everyone, everything's got to be connected. We can't have two different Jokers. I didn't say that. No. You, we can't have two different Jokers at the I same time. I think it time. is absolutely stupid to do a Joker origin movie when you have a Joker that's not fully fleshed out. You're still going to flesh him out. You're going to do an origin story that's got nothing to do with Jared Leto. And Jared Leto can either go from that, see what they do with the origin story, incorporate into his character or not. I'm okay with the telling of an origin story for the Joker. I think the time is right. I think it'd be awesome to see. Especially Only time will tell. Especially if it's like, you know, one of those bullshit origin stories where it's not really his origin story, like we got in The Dark Knight, where it's just like one possible origin story. I'm well, a, because I'm on board. the Joker even says in the comics, in a kill in the killing joke, when it, you know, when it comes to the past, I prefer multiple choice. Right. So this is one Example and again, we know in the comics there are three different Jokers, so Jared Leto Joker can still be Jared Leto's Joker. If this doesn't fit in your little purview, small-minded box, it's not about being small-minded. It's about fleshing out what you have and fixing your bullshit. And they can still do all that with it's this movie. Rectifying. You know where the, you know where Joker needs to go. To hell. I mean, maybe. <laughs> uh, that's not where I was going with that. But no hey. way. No, it's too late now. We're past that. No, we're past on, that lead where, where does he need we're, to go? We're past that lead in now. No, just say it. <laughs> God, you're like a fucking girl. <laughs> you fucked it up. I didn't. Well, you know where he needs to go. To hell. And then you were like, no. No, that's, that's not, not nice. That's not nice. Joker's a nice guy. He just, yeah. you know. He's just an agent of chaos. <laughs> yeah. Whoever said that was wrong. I don't know. He's not chaotic neutral, though. Yeah, you know, you know where we need to go. To the Red Dragon Inn. Slam a few beers, gamble, roughhouse. Oh my gosh. Could you imagine the trouble you and I could get into that place? All of the trouble. And you know what? We've got into that trouble because we host events for Red Dragon Inn. Guys, go to slugfestgames.com slash ETG. They've got the games. They've got the swag. They've got more games than just Red Dragon Inn. They've got the Battle for Greyport. Fishing for Terrorist. And High Noon Saloon. Also, guys, for you who don't know what swag is, let me tell you. T-shirts. Mugs. Flask. Uh, flask. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, go to slugfestgames.com slash ETG for more information. So yeah. But there's that whole extended universe thing. I'm done with the extended universe. I'm okay it with this. It is a thing though. It doesn't have to be. It already is. No, because look, you, you end up you end up being trippy. Like right now you're all like, we end up being trippy on how does this movie fit in here? How does this movie fit in there? How, it doesn't need to. It can just tell stories. And then every once in a while... You bring them back for a big crossover event like they do in the comics and be done with it. In, I'm okay with this. In the comics, everything is linked all the time. They, they retcon it. It's okay. Dark Knight's Metal. <laughs> like, look at that, for example. That's the summer crossover. It's happening late in the summer. I'm just saying, look, you don't need to tell... You can tell individual stories. Okay. And not worry about the big continuity issues. Marvel... Marvel is worried. Marvel, every movie in Marvel's fits in a little slang. And now they're starting to broaden it out with Captain Marvel and stuff like that. <clears throat> but you can tell where the movies are meant to be. 
I'm just saying you don't need to do that all the time in comic book movies. You can tell good stories that are one-off stories and, and just bring the big guys over every once in a while for big fucking crossovers. It's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. And I'm tired of us, of us Marvel fans, us DC fans, us comic book fans bitching and whining that movies need to fit in the extended universe. That's how you end up with crap like The Mummy with Tom Cruise. That's how you end up with studios trying to figure out how to cash in on what Marvel's doing instead of focusing on the important thing, which is, hey, you want to bring people into the fucking movie theaters? Make good fucking movies for a change. Quit trying to quit trying to plan out four, five, six sequels ahead. Focus on the one individual product that you're trying to put out instead of the franchise that it could become. Everything is franchise, though. No, it doesn't have... Look, look back in the day, let's look, let's look at some of the big franchises that were back in the 80s. Die Hard. Die Hard wasn't meant to be a franchise. Die Hard was, let's make a good movie. They make a good movie. They read a story, like, hey, this will fit with John McClane. Let's do Die Hard 2. Get Bruce Willis on board? Yeah, it fits. They weren't looking to make franchises. Tell good individual stories and let the characters lie where they meet. Where, where they end. If the story's done, the story's done. Oh, Roger, so sad. I'm not sad. I'm tired of fucking looking on Netflix and seeing nothing but string a string of sequels and, and, and original IPs just going nowhere. I mean, we get some original stuff that's good. Some. <laughs> not every movie. It, it's always been like that. It hasn't always been like that. Look mm-hmm. at the 90s. Look at the 90s. You had sequels here and there. It wasn't a big... It wasn't a the huge deal. The movies that get sequels are the good movies. And... Let's talk about this, because back in the 90s, that was the heyday of fucking Disney sequels. Aladdin, uh, Aladdin, the whoa, King whoa, of Thieves, whoa, hold on, Aladdin, hold on, Return hold on, of Jafar. Time out, time out. Those, were, those were direct-to-video sequels. That's different. That's a little different. Oh, my God. Direct-to-video sequels, that, that's... Lion King 2, Simba's Pride. Was not theaters. released in theaters. It did go it, No, it was, it was a video release. I'm Google on it. Shit. Google that I'm shit. I'm on it. You, you keep talking while I look this up. But, uh, no, fucking Disney made a fuck ton of sequels. And yeah, it was like all straight-to-video. For like every movie ever, they're like, "Hey, let's make another sequel." What do you got? I'm looking it up. You keep talking. Well, sorry, I'm just I'm on the sequel kick now, I'm, and Disney did it all the time. They do it now with the Marvel movies. <laughs> I came with that's what I'm saying. But yeah, uh, is a 1998 animated direct to video romantic okay. musical film and sequel. Then I was wrong. Yes, you were. No, like doing, and, and Disney also went further, a step further because they, they, most of that shit became cartoons. Timon and Pumbaa had a show. They did. Uh, the Emperor's Old, the Emperor's New Groove. That was DreamWorks, not Disney. I thought Disney, okay. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the Emperor's New Groove was a DreamWorks. Lilo show. and Stitch. Lilo and Stitch, but they had Lilo and Stitch 2. Stitch Which was direct to video? It was direct to video. Um, I'm and okay with direct to video series. They had the, sh- the series. Uh, Lilo and Stitch. Yeah, yeah, which were good, but I'm okay with director video sequels, and I can tell you why. Honestly, they don't take up that slot in the movie summer. You're still trying to. They know, hey, Tremors, Tremors, prime example. Tremors one came out, underground sensation was it was a hit. Yeah. Tremors two, they're like, look, we know this movie's not going to do well in theaters. Let's make it, put it on the market. Our fans that want to find it can find it. They're fine. I think Tremors two is my favorite Tremors movie. Uh. It's a pretty damn good one. It is a good movie. <laughs> Tremors 2. Kevin Bacon's doing a Tremors TV series now. Is he? Yeah, it's going to be on sci-fi. It's going to be a, it's a mini-series. Okay. Four-part mini-series. It's going to be a direct sequel to Tremors 1. It's Ooh. what Kevin Bacon's character did. Because we got we got uh, Fred Ward's character. We know what he did after. We know what Burt did after Tremors. Yeah. We don't know what Kevin Bacon's character did. So it's going to be a direct sequel to the first Tremors with his character. Nice. I don't know if they're ignoring the other four sequels. Or not? Probably should. Probably should. I don't know. Tremors 2 is really good, though. No, Tremors 2 is a great flick, but if, if it's just what happens directly after 1, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. They're doing a Rogue One, by the way. What? It's yeah. It's kind of like Rogue One. Kind of. I think it's funny. Except it's a four-part miniseries on sci-fi, so... I mean, that's even better. Is it? Because sci-fi kind of sucks now. <clears throat> sci-fi has, like, hidden gems here and there. Like, I remember the heyday of sci-fi before it became sci-fi when it was SCI-fi. You know, you had Battlestar yeah. Galactica... Not original programming, but before that, you had Mystery Science Theater, you had anime, you had... Now I'm watching, and I flip through, and it's like, here's an action movie. Here's some bullshit... Sharknado, yeah. which is the dumbest shit ever. Which, I'm okay with Sharknado. I hate it. I, but, you know, it's just a it's just a stream They're on, like, bullshit. Sharknado number Six. 16 now. Six? Yeah. Six is coming, because five was Make America Bait again. It's so stupid. Have you watched any of them? Yes. They're awesome. They're so dumb. Yes, they are. But there's something about tongue-in-cheek. It's fun. That's, I'm okay with. 
I don't want a whole network dedicated to that, though, and that's what sci-fi has become. It's not... Well, the, I, I only brought it up because the first time I watched it, I fucking watched it on sci-fi, and I was like, why is this stupid fucking movie on sci-fi? Makes sense. But that's what the network... That's what the network's turned into. They, they, they've gone away from... They... they Science sci-fi when they first started had a comic book TV show. I don't know if you remember this, but on Sundays it was a weekly round table where assholes would sit around and bitch like we do about comics and movies and games and Star Trek and I was like, oh my god, this is awesome. This is my life in the future. And fucking they just they're like G4. They got away from what made them good. Well, on that note, guys, do not get away from what makes you good. And one of the ways that you can do this is by filling holes in your comic collection. By going to cloud9comicsandmore.com. Or just give Paul a call at 314-691-2864. So basically, Cloud9 Comics, what they do, or Cloud9 Comics and more rather, what they do is they have a bunch of CGC graded stuff. They have more than that. Uh, they do. They do. But I'm going to get into this first. <laughs> if you want a comic that is graded 9.8, 9.6, you're looking for a gem, basically. Something that is always going to be valuable because it has that grade stamped on it. You can hang it proudly on your wall. That's what you want to get. If you're looking to fill holes in your collection, guess what? They've got loose issues. They've got trades. If you're looking for just some fun pop culture stuff, They've got that. Jason just got an original 1977 Star Wars poster. I know. It's so cool looking. And it's freaking sick, dude. I have a Buddy Christ from them. Yeah. Plush doll. Plush doll. Um, so, yeah, go to cloud9comicsandmore.com. You can find them on eBay as well. Amazing stuff there. Paul is the man. Uh, again, his phone number is 314 314- Six nine one two eight six four, and if you are looking to unload comics or anything, anything, Paul is buying and he is fair. Yeah, I've sold him my stuff. Yeah, Jason has. Yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah, Paul is good people. All right, so here's what else we need you to do, guys. Go to entertainmentgeeky.com. Dude, we've got social media all over. There. Like all over. It's like it's like all over the website. Yeah, our fragmented website. It's just. We need to fix that, by the way. We're working on it. Um, so, Hydra did some damage. Yeah, love on our social media. Like, comment, subscribe, follow, all that stuff. And guys, if you want, if you really want, Chris is on Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to use it. I don't fully understand it. But I'm here for you. It's kind of like, you know, our lives. Yeah. 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 Also, guys, coming up in the week, in a week and a half, we're releasing our first YouTube video. Oh, yeah. Geeks, Geeks go, go comic shopping. Wow. Um, Carl, the cosplayer, was kind enough to join us for that and help us out. Newcastle, big shout out. Newcastle Comics. Oh, you guys were amazing. Um, so we'll get that posted in the next week and a half. Guys, as always, stay geeky.